Hi everybody, this is Dr. Deb from Let's Talk Wellness Now, and I am super excited to have Stacy Shalemi here today with us. And she is a well-known worldwide author, speaker. She's changed her entire life um, into health and wellness. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about I, I read your story and it's just incredible. And for those of you who have not read her story, um, we have her link posted below here. Go read her story because it's amazing. But tell us a little bit about where your passion came from. Did it come from your own health issues or did you have a little passion in wellness before? It did come from my own health issues. Um, you know, I had uh, developed epilepsy at the age of five. I had encephalitis. It had traveled to my brain. Um, I was induced in a coma for four days. Uh, they thought I was probably going to be pa uh, paraplegic or I was probably going to have um, brain damage from the, uh, the virus that had traveled through my brain. Um, luckily, uh, those things didn't happen, but I did end up with epilepsy. And so living with epilepsy was a, a lifelong roller coaster mm -hmm. ride. It was uh, very difficult. And as I got older, um, I had, a, you know, life had become more and more difficult. And you know, it was very hard, especially when you're taking seizures, to try to live the life, you know, with high goals and high expectations for yourself when seizures can come anytime and really, you know, stop you from doing the things you really, you know, want to do in, in your life. Oh. So when I was in college, you know, I had, um, you know, the, 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 the late night studying and, you know, the, the stress of uh, taking tests and trying to do well, you know, a lot of those things were bringing on seizures and I was struggling and I was, and I just didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. So I had written a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation and I wrote a letter asking other people to share their own stories and tell me how they deal with it and how they cope with it. And uh, shockingly, I had three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada, uh, people writing me, telling me their stories, um, sharing how they live with epilepsy. And I was so inspired and it really made me realize that I wasn't the only one. And there's so many people out there feeling and thinking the same way I did. And um, what I did was, is I started to write a book in college and it was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And mm -hmm. And uh, the book was about uh, different ways to cope with epilepsy. But I had just started the book. And then, you know, as time went on, I kind of put it aside. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started um, working uh, with uh, uh, different um, people. Uh, you know, it, uh, when I came out, I started working with a, a big uh, network company. And I actually uh, had uh, been released from my position because they saw me have a seizure. Mm -hmm. And so then I had started working with an herbalist and I was doing a lot of writing and research for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, a lot of interesting things I was learning and I was applying a lot of those things to my own life. And you know, I went from maybe having nine seizures a day to six to three to two to one and my seizures became controlled. And uh, I was still taking medications, but I wasn't controlled 100% with just the medications. It was when I started applying a different lifestyle for myself. That's when my seizures became controlled. And so, you know, I realized that it's not just popping a pill. It's more than that. It's about how we treat our bodies, how we live, the food we put in our bodies, you know, the, 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 our sleeping patterns. And, you know, a lot of things have an impact on people's health. And that's the message I started getting out. And I had started a little blog and I continued to write that book I was telling you about. And the blog had about 400 people on it. And from 400 people, it went from, 400 to 10,000. And then I saw how many people were interested in natural healing and health. And it really intrigued me. And then I started to do my own research too. I started to not only write a book about epilepsy, I was working on a book about um, health and wellness and different herbs and different uh, ways to naturally heal the body. And what I did was, is uh, it took me about five years, but I completed that book that I was telling you about, and it was called mm -hmm. The Complete Herbal Guide. And The Complete Herbal Guide had about five to 600 pages of different herbs that, that can help all different types of condition, conditions and all different types of uh, illnesses and even things like uh, sleep disorders, you know, uh, uh, lots of different things. So, uh, you know, I, and then that's what I named my website after. I, I created not just having a little blog on 
own blogger. I created my own website. And today we actually have over 300,000 people monthly come on that website. Yeah. And people are very interested in uh, they really, you know, people just, you know, nowadays I think people are more health conscious. They don't really want to just pop a pill. They want, they want to find out how they can help themselves. And that's the great thing about it is that people are striving to find the answer. People don't want to have, you know, an illness or a condition or they, you know, they don't want to feel the way they do or they just want optimal health. They want to continue the way to feel the way they do on an everyday basis. And they know they're getting older, but they want to maintain in their health so you know people are looking to be healthy and that's the great thing and that's what I try to provide for people too is just the knowledge so they can you know look for those answers and find them that is so amazing that is such a great story I know so many people I'm thinking of already that I want to make sure get this podcast to be able to get <laughs> They, they or their children are suffering from epilepsy and they've done so many different things. And, you know, we have a lot of people um, in our practice that have moved to other states so that they can get availability of CBD or marijuana to try for epilepsy and, and try all kinds of different things. But I think you're so right. You know, even for us, we see so many more people coming to the table saying, I need to change my diet. They're aware of what the food quality is that we have in this country and the right with it. And they want to learn more. They want to be educated and they want to keep their families healthy. But sometimes getting that knowledge and information is such a struggle for them because they just don't know where to go and who to trust. So I'm so glad that you're putting together some written things for people and you're creating a blog and a place where people come and get good information, solid uh, information, because that's huge. Thank you so much. You know, it's, there's so much, you know, in, in, on the internet alone, there's so much information, but it's like, where do you get the right information? And, and, you know, who do you trust? And, you know, is the information they're reading, is it accurate? You know, so it's like, you know, it's really, you, know, you really have to be really conscious of what you read and, and what, you know, and not just go by one thing, but I always say, do your research, you know, be your own doctor, you know, make a list of questions, you know, and make sure, you know, you just don't, go by what one person says really do do as much knowledge and and you know and 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 searching as you can to find the answers to the questions you know and then go and, and ask the doctors and ask you know but also make sure that you're understanding what the illness is what the condition is and when you go in there you have those questions and you you know anything you're unsure of or you're you're doubtful of you know ask the questions don't be afraid to ask questions mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love working with patients who come in with questions because I know that they're engaged, right? And they want right. to be a partner in their healthcare. They just don't want me to write a prescription and send them on the way. Right. Or to just kind of vomit out all my information to them. And then exactly. they, you know, it's great to have a partner. And when they ask questions and you know what, nobody asks the right questions all the time, but you're asking questions and the more questions you ask, the more you learn. And then another question will pop up and another one. And that's how right. you about your illness. And that's how you are empowered to, to take care of yourself because ultimately that's what has to happen. When you leave that 20 minute office visit or hour long office visit, you still have to be able to implement everything exactly that told you to do. And you can't do that. Not even possibly in 15 minutes. No right. Mm-hmm. So you've written a ton of books. I've looked at all the books that you've written and there's a whole variety of things. Do you have a favorite book that you that you've written, do you think? Um, you know, I I've I've, you know, in the course of my lifetime, I've I've gone through a lot of different things and you know, I've I've, you know, had like I told you my roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when when things have gone well and I've I've learned things myself because it, you know, life is just a it, it, it's it's an open book and you're constantly mm -hmm. learning. And you know, for the people who think they know everything, nobody knows everything. You know, every day you find out more and more things, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's the people who are open-minded, you know, that actually Actually, you know accomplish the most in life and you know as I was going through life you know like when I went through like I told you the complete herbal guide mm -hmm. you know I, I realized the impact impact of how natural resources could have on our bodies and then I wanted to teach people about it and then I did my own research to even go farther than just epilepsy but you know mm -hmm. teach people about all different conditions because you know doing my own research I realized that the complete herbal guide was great because it, it showed people there's so many herbs out there and you have to be so careful too because yeah. I think what people don't realize is that there's a lot of herbal medicine out there that is actually just as strong as prescription medication mm -hmm. and you also have to be so careful if you're taking prescriptions for like high blood pressure or even medica mm -hmm. like epilepsy or depression or there's some there's a lot of medications that can interact so 
yeah. you know, you can't just go out there and, and think, you know, okay, I could buy this herb and I'm going to feel better. Mm-hmm. You have to be very careful. So, you know, that's what I wanted to, I wanted to put that book out there so people could learn what's out there, but yet let's be careful and learn the precautions because there's so many things that, you know, could happen when you're trying different herbs and different yeah. things out there. And then there's very, there's ones that are very dangerous that nobody should even use, you know, so people have to be careful. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think people forget that a lot of our pharmaceutical drugs originally came from herbs. Yes, they did. They started from, but they extract out one piece of the herb and they call it a drug because they can't patent the herb. But they think right. that that one piece that they took out is still in that whole herb. And so right. you do, you have to be really cautious with what you put together. And, and even to think about allergies from plants, people think nobody has any allergies, but that's what seasonal allergies are. And so right. you know, there are certain things like... I, I even tell people milk thistle is great. It's a wonderful herb. But if you have a ragweed allergy, you don't want to use that. For that right. Because you might have some problems with it. And we don't always think about that because you're right. We think, we assume that it's plants, it's safe, it came from the heavens, it's great. But right. it, it's medicine whether we like it or not. Exactly. Can you talk in your research? I've had this conversation quite a bit with my patients too, but I'm sure in your research you found even the quality. What what can you talk to of the quality of herbs or where they come from that people should watch out for? Well, you know, it's so important with the soil. People don't realize, mm-hmm. but you know, there's different different areas have different soil, and and you know, even like in, there's there's, I, I think it was GNC that originally a lot they were getting a lot of their their supplements from china and then china had contaminated soil so then you know there was a big issue and big concerns that arose in the united states about that you know you don't you have to really realize where these where these supplements you're buying, where are they coming from? And I always say, like in the ingredients, if you see ingredients in the back of a supplement and you can't pronounce it, then it's probably not good for you. You know, so you have to be so careful too, because like nowadays anybody can sell an herb. You know, you can yeah. brand it and sell it. It's so easy to do. You know, but you really have to make sure who you're buying from, where it's coming from, and what is actually in the ingredients. You know, is it, is it really good? Is it, you know, is it, is it something that's going to benefit your body or is it, you know, because sometimes people want to save money, but sometimes, you know, spending a few extra dollars is actually worth it too. Yeah, absolutely. I know uh, Kerry Bone, and he has a company out of Australia, and he's already told stories where he will get a barrel of raw ingredient in, and they all assume that you're just going to check the top of the barrel. Mm-hmm. And so if you only test the top, they're going to put their best product on the top. But if you right. go down to the middle or even the bottom of the barrel, you know, manufacturers are slick and not all of them are up front. And so right. if you finally get to the bottom of the barrel, you don't have the same product that you have on the top of the barrel sometimes. And so if people aren't doing their due diligence when they're creating these products and they're really testing them, you have no idea what quality you could be getting. So it's so important to look at the manufacturer and really even call the manufacturer and talk to them and make sure you feel comfortable with who you're buying product from or or you know somebody else has already done that due diligence for you. Right. And you know what I've done too, too, is I've actually Googled certain companies that I didn't really know much about. I was kind of curious and you'd be surprised if a company is not doing well, you know, people will report them or there will be, or other people will write articles about them if they find out things that aren't you know very good about that company and you could actually find out a lot just by putting the word you know bad supplement or scam or this or that at the end of the word or at the end of the the company's name and things will just pop up and you'd be surprised at what you can find out too if you're going if you're interested in buying a certain brand but you don't know too much of it you know before you buy it you want to learn about it you know you'll see if the company actually is a is a reputable company or not so reputable yeah, that's a great point. I do that a lot of times too, especially with something that I've never heard of before. I want right. to know how long have they been around? What have they been doing? And, you know, it's so easy these days to market something as the latest and greatest. And especially yeah. looking at weight loss or sleep or brain fog, you know, those are big ticket things that people are looking for to, to get better with. And some people are so desperate, they'll try anything because it, the marketing sounds great. But yeah, you get down to it, the marketing isn't what you're taking. So I'm so glad that you talk about that. That's great. So talk about um, some of your other things that you've done that, that you really love to do that you're passionate about. Well, I, you know, I do a lot about like food for medicine. Like I really, you know, 
I really like the idea about, um, you know, what we put in our bodies, because especially now, like I, I had recently traveled to Europe, and a lot of the food that we have in the United States is actually restricted in many countries in Europe because of how hazardous it is to the body. And it, it just drives me nuts, you know, that we allow so many things in our country, and these things are actually destroying our bodies, and we just put them in our food. And a lot of times, people don't even realize that a lot of these things that are in the food, like food dyes, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many foods in, in the food stores that are, they, they're just clear, but they, to make them more attractive and more wise, they put different dyes and all these dyes are cancerous and they put arsenic in the chicken and they, you know, they do these crazy things like they dip, I think it's, um, chlorine that they dip the carrots in to make it, you know, stay longer, you know, so it's like, you know, things like this, you know, we put in our bodies, we don't even realize it. And it's just the toxins just lay there and they don't, you know, the, our body doesn't know what to do with them. And then, you know, we end up feeling sluggish and tired and not so good. And then, you know, our, our bodies are trying to like break these things down and get it out of the body. And they're working so hard but yet, you know, it, it's, it's destroying our, our, our body and people don't realize the destruction that it's actually doing. And then I just tell people, you know, there are certain foods we always should think about, you know, buying organic because it's hard, you know, we want to be healthy, but yet they make it very difficult for the person who just, you know, it, it doesn't have a lot of money and, and can't spend tons of, of dollars mm -hmm. on, on, you know, organic food because it is a lot, very expensive. Very expensive. It's so expensive. I remember seeing a study a few years back about the obesity rate going up because of all of these toxins. That yeah. So we, we don't think about that. We just look at people and think, well, they have a bad diet or they're not exercising. And I tell you, I talk to women every single day and they will tell me I'm eating 800 or 1200 calories a day and I am not yeah. weight and they are a toxic mess. They're right. so full of chemicals and that just sits in that body fat and creates so many problems that people don't even realize that's happening and they feel guilty that it's something they're doing, but it's right. a resource that's so bad that's doing it to us. Yeah, I had a friend that she, you know, she, her, she couldn't lose weight. All of a sudden, she decided to change her, her diet. She changed, you know, she changed the quality of her food, and she changed her portion size. And all of a sudden, the food, you know, the, the, the pounds just started, you know, pouring off of her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for years, she couldn't lose any weight. And then all of a sudden, because she changed the quality of the food she was eating, and she just, you know, decreased the portions a little, and, and that was all she needed. And her body just changed, you know, awesome. immediately. That is so great. Do you recommend that people look at um, farmers markets for better food and a little bit better price? You know, I, I like farmers markets a lot, you know, but the problem is I, I, a lot of, a lot of times some some of them are a little expensive. I know by me they are. I don't know about in Wisconsin, but mm -hmm. in New Jersey you go to a farmer's market and it can be very expensive. But there are there are some that are reasonable. So I'd say yes, go, you know, look and, and see if you if you can find, you know, food that, you know, from a far farmer's market mm -hmm. that is at reasonable cost, you know, that is healthy to the body. Yeah. It, it, I think people have to start to be creative these days. If we want to eat healthy and do it on a budget, we've got to be somewhat creative. Yeah that they can do that from a better standpoint. So, so talk a little bit more about your herbal guide. What can somebody find inside of that herbal guide? I also talk about too, um, I talk about um, meditation and yoga and how we need to not just cleanse the body, but cleanse our mind as well. Because a lot of times, you know, the way we feel, you know, I think it's it's 90% of illnesses are caused by stress. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, what the mind can do to our bodies, you know, how we feel and our emotions. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, as, you know, especially in today's society, we're always on a go-go, you know, everyone's in a rush to, to go somewhere or be somewhere and they have to do this and they have to do that. And sometimes it, you know, just by doing a little meditation, you know, in the morning, maybe 15 minutes of meditation or a little meditation before you go to bed and just learn how to relax and sometimes learn how to cope with stress and cope with problems in our life. You know, you could reduce your stress and even, you know, improve your health and even, you know, make yourself feel better. So when you go out and, you know, you're not as affected by certain things that, you know, could really make you feel uptight and, and cause when we, we're, we're uptight, we can't focus and enjoy life. We're just, you know, we're just so distressed and we can't think clearly a lot of people 
when we're distressed, we can't f function well. So, you know, how can you enjoy life if there's so many things on your shoulders at all the time? And by using meditation and by doing yoga a lot, you'd be so surprised how, first of all, it makes you so energetic because you're just, you know, you're, you're stretching and you're moving muscles and you're helping the circulation in your blood and it makes you so feel so great. And then you're also at the same time, you're cleansing your mind and you know at a lot of times you know you don't have to do like long sessions you could do short sessions and you'd be so surprised on how well you feel and even sound therapy you know people like to use the sound bowl and they you know mm -hmm. different vibrations and sounds how it just you know it, it helps the body and and it can cleanse your 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 body and they you know so many people say it helps them with their their illnesses or with their sleep and so many different things you know i you know i, I tell people you know spiritually it's, it's so important to 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 cleanse your mind it's so you know so important absolutely i agree you know especially if you have a chronic illness if you don't have some kind of spiritual foundation you're going to be hard pressed to be able to maintain or just get through that chronic illness especially yeah. if you have a long illness you have to have something that you can cling to that clears your mind clears your body that you just feel comfortable with and honestly, for me, living with epilepsy, if I didn't cleanse my mind and if I didn't learn how to cope with life itself and cope with my illness and even focus on positivity, you know, I mm -hmm. even wrote a book about being positive and how, you know, how you look at life can have such an impact on your illness and how impact on your overall health. You know, sometimes, you know, you have to learn how, you know, I believe in life, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, sometimes we may not understand at first why these things happen to us, mm -hmm. but you know, for me, you know, I learned the, the good things that came out were, you know, it made me a different person. It made me look at life differently. It made me look at people differently. And I don't think I would have gone the same route in life if I didn't have the epilepsy. I think I would be having a martini somewhere in New York City and, <laughs> and you know, living and working at a big company. And instead, yeah. I'm helping people and I'm reaching out to others like myself. And it makes me feel so good. And so achieved and you know so i believe you know sometimes you know things are put in our lives for a reason and absolutely I, I believe that same thing you know the old adage that god doesn't give you anything more than you can handle sometimes yeah. i have to look up and go really are you kidding <laughs> <laughs> i agree you're so right because down the road you find out like oh this opened this door for me that i wouldn't have gone down if this yeah happened. and i met this person and so all of a sudden everything in your life starts to come together a little bit more for you so right I am so grateful that you're doing this. This is just so awesome. But I have to ask you about your book, The Romantic Poetry Straight from the Heart. Where did that <laughs> come from? It is so intriguing to me. You know, I, I met my husband in um, in college. I had um, I was in English class actually, and I had met my husband in college. And we were we were so funny because when we met, we were two different people. And, and we and over time we became, you know, our, my strengths were his weaknesses, and his weaknesses were my strength. And he was always there for me. And he was, you know, I went through some hard times, like I mentioned to you, you know, mm -hmm. especially with my epilepsy. And he was always there no matter what. And so when I wrote the the book on romantic poetry I really over the years you know I've never met anyone like my husband he's just mm -hmm. an amazing person and I really realized you know um, how much you know how, how sometimes it's so hard to find love but when you do find it it's out there I think every it's out there for everybody and you know what is love you know sometimes I think there's a misconception when you watch TV and you watch some of these yeah. shows I think you get the wrong idea of what love is, you know, right. and to, you know, and that's what that book was about is like what love really is and, you know, and how powerful of an impact it can have in someone's life. And, mm -hmm. you know, it really, it love is, is being there for the person, no matter what, you know, people, you know, things happen to people in life and, you know, and it's those people who are always there for you, no matter what, it's those people who accept you no matter what. And the people who are, you know, willing to sacrifice themselves for you, you know, that to me, that's, true love you know and just being there for one another you know so that was what the poem was about the it was a, a lot about what love really is you know I love that that's so great you know and I think <laughs> you're so true our idea of what love should be or what love is is so different today than what it used to be yeah uh, so that is so awesome I'm gonna snag a copy of that and definitely because <laughs> I have this conversation a lot with my patients every day about you know people who've been together a long time or they're their sex lives has kind of fizzled out and they don't know how to keep things alive and keep things going. Yeah. So a good reality check. 
for a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. We want to snag a copy of that, so definitely. So tell me a little bit about your book, The Natural Remedies for Common Conditions. What's that one about? That one was, you know, basically, I, you know, that book, um, The Complete Herbal Guy, was so big and had so many things in it, you know, and it talked about everything under the sun. So I, I wanted to make it more simplified. So what I did was, is that I took the, the, the book, the, 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 the book about common conditions, and I, I talked about the, the most common conditions that most people talk about and what actually is good for those, those conditions. There's, some, there's certain things like depression, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, you know, erectile dysfunction you know like things that people struggle with every day but you know and and just broke it down and you know what different natural what different natural resources are actually good for all these different common you know sleep disorder is, is such a big thing you know and and things like that so that that the book was basically to make it a little bit more simpler and just to, to, to talk about things that really affect people like diabetes and you know things that you see all the time that people are reaching out and, and talking about and trying to find the answers to that's awesome. That's awesome. So besides writing, you also lecture or speak um, yes. bit around the country, I assume. Um, so tell me a little bit about what your speaking life is like. You know, I, I try as much as possible. I love to speak and I love to, you know, and people always come up to me afterwards and they always tell me, you know, I felt so inspired by what you mm -hmm. have to say. And, you know, I, to me, I, 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 over the years, so much has happened to me, but like I said, I constantly focus on the positive and because I focus on the positive, you know, is I, I, I accomplished a lot and I, I realized that I accomplished a lot, you know, because mm -hmm. I started from square one, you know, when, you know, from and and I really you know built myself up and I worked on my self esteem because I didn't always have a high self esteem when I was young you know I struggled mm -hmm. with epilepsy and I didn't feel very good about myself I was more of a follower than a leader but over time you know as I started helping others and then I realized how much words could actually impact a person's life by someone learn hearing what you have to say and someone you know and then you telling them okay this is what I did and this is how it helped me mm -hmm. and this is you know and and people actually listening and and some people trying and then it actually helps them not only do you feel so inspired like I had one person who told me they they were on the verge of suicide and they they wow. took my information and they applied it to their own life and they created their own daily regimen and they started living life you know um, they changed the way they used to live and they started living life and, and they said that she didn't feel that 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 thing inside of her that made her want to feel like she just wanted to end it all. And mm -hmm. when I heard that, I was just wow. stunned, you know, like, and, and to, to be able to be, be able to feel like, oh my God, I actually, you know, my words, just my words alone actually had such an impact on this person's life. And it was like a, a feeling of accomplishment, like, a feeling, uh, such a great feeling to know that I help somebody else. And I, uh, that's when I really realized the, the power of words, you know, the, how, you know, words could really impact a person's life. And, you know, that's what I try to do is I focus on the positive and I try to, you know, tell people, you know, this is what I've been through and this is, you know, and it's similar because every condition is, we all have conditions. Everything's very similar. You know, we, we have, we treat them differently, but everybody goes through life. Everybody has something. And and it affects us in similar ways. And it's about really trying to, 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 to find out what the best solution is for you. Because what helps me might not help you. But, you know, by working with somebody and, and, and you know, you kind of like you can feel, you know, you can put out options and then, you know, and then whatever works for them is great. But it doesn't always have to, you know, some people think, well, if it doesn't work for me, it's not going to work for you. And that's not true, you know, mm -hmm. but being able to just, you know, to talk about things and, and put out solutions and to say, you know, this is, you know, these are the options and then people can see what really works for them, you know, say, you know, I kind of like that idea. Let me try that. And then if it does work for them, you know, it's, 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 wonderful to be able to help people. That is so true. I, I hear that a lot from people who speak because, you know, we all think that our story is not going to impact somebody, but you never know when your story might impact somebody and might just hit what they need to hear at that moment. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes social media can be a negative thing, but this is where social media can be a huge plus is when you're sharing right. your story and you're doing it in a positive fashion and you're, you know, all you need to do is impact one person 
at any given time and you could change their life. That's such an incredible story too. I'm so glad that that person didn't want to end their life after they got a chance to talk to you and listen to you. That's awesome. So with all of your speaking, everything that you do, you are an alpha woman, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> are you killing it in the world? What kinds of things do you do personally to keep yourself healthy, especially if you're traveling a lot, what kind of things are your go-tos that you never want to give up to keep you healthy? You know, I realize over the years, my sleep is so important. You know, like I, some people don't even realize how much sleep impacts a person's life, but we all need to recharge ourselves. And I remember I was working, um, I had to uh, do a, a session with Ariana um, Huffington mm -hmm. and she, um, she had just uh, wrote, wrote a book about sleep depression and she had, um, she had talked about how it almost killed her, you know, and, and it, and I realized through my own life, you know, like if I don't get enough to sleep, my body completely goes off and mm -hmm. I can't function. You know, I will have seizures if I don't get enough of sleep. Like, you know, I can't focus. I can't do, you know, sleep is such an important thing for everybody, you yeah. know, and, and I realized by, you know, and also you, you need satisfaction. You need to do things that mean a lot to you in life. You know, like you have to please yourself. It's not always about pleasing others, but you have to do things that are meaningful for yourself. Is there certain things you, that you love to do? You need to take time out for your yourself because happiness is so important making yourself happy as a person what is meaningful for you what makes you happy you know sometimes you know some people just like being with their family and spending that quality time with their family some people like going away and just having their own time by themselves you know it, there's so many things but you know taking the time to do things that make you happy even a hobby or just doing things that you know going on the beach and listening to the waves you know and just sitting there maybe reading a book something to, to make you happy and bring peace and, 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 and joy into your life, you know, it is very important as well. Those are huge things. I'm, I'm like you too. I sleep is so important to me and I struggle so much with it. Um, yeah. those people I lay down at night and it's the first time I'm quiet. And so my brain turns on and then my creative spark goes and then yeah. I'm up past the night. And so I'm learning too, the older I get, like I used to be able to run on four hours of sleep, but now my body really wants eight hours of sleep. Yeah. So trying to find that balance is so important because you're right. You get irritable and cranky and and there's a reason sleep deprivation is a torture tool, you know, there's a reason yeah. for that. So, and it's so important to health and wellness. So, and I love what you're talking about too, with happiness. I think we're so in, ingrained in making everybody else happy and putting ourselves last that, that if we don't fill up our cup first, we don't have anything to spill over to anybody else. And right. so I'm really glad that you're talking about that and how important that is for people to fill themselves up first. And I think it, you know, it strengthens you as a person. It makes you happy, you know, gives you energy. You know, people don't realize, you know, be, you know, by, by doing things to make yourself happy, you can't help others unless you help yourself first. So you really need to care for yourself and do what's, what's best for you. And then you can go and try to be the savior of others and help others, you know, but you always have to think about yourself first. And that's something that I think, especially a lot, a lot of people who like to help others sometimes forget about the most important person and that's themselves. That's themselves, right. You know, there's a reason why we're on the airplane. They tell us to put our mask on first. <laughs> we help somebody else because we'll be out there helping everybody else and forget like, oh, I need some of that oxygen too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, this has been such a great conversation. Um, if somebody wants to learn more about what you do, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? You know, they can go. I have a stacychilemi.com website. That's where it's all about me. And you can find out any information you want. And I, you can, there's a contact form, and I'll, I'll get the message right away. You can go on the completeherbalguide.com. You can go on onto the contact form. You know, those messages will come to me. And if you, you have a question or, you know, if you want, you know, if you'd like me to help you with a project, you know, you can contact me there. And I'd be more than happy to, you know, answer and, and do whatever I can. Oh, that would be great. I think our listeners are going to be so excited to see what you've done. Look at your books, reach out to you, get some information and figure out maybe even how they can book you as a speaker, because that would be awesome. I think <laughs> you as a keynote speaker someplace, you're just so, it's so full of energy and so positive. I just love talking with you. This has been great. Uh, Anything else you want to share with our listeners today? 
You know, I, I just, you know, it, we, we've hit so many topics and such. We, we really hit, like, I think some of the most important topics that you really need to think about, like food and herbals and sleep and taking care of yourself and happiness and being positive. These are all, like, amazing things. Like, I off the top of my head, Head. like I can't think of anything like really like off the top of my head but we've hit so many things you know you, people you know it's 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 all about you know we, we don't know what the next day may, may bring and you know and I think that's so important that I've learned over time you know sometimes we we expect we're going to be here and stay and we expect we're going to be here next month and I always tell people live today for the fullest you know live today like it's your last day you know do you know do the things that mean the most to you don't worry about you know about work and making money and this and that because so many people are always so worried about you know how are they going to pay the bills or can they buy this luxury item and that you know who has what worry about making yourself happy worry about you know appreciate life have gratitude you know i think some people don't realize you know some people forget you know the the beauty and the meaningful things of life you know being thankful for what we have just going outside it's not, i have a i have a nice backyard with a lot of trees and you know sometimes i will go on the deck and have a cup of coffee and i'll just look at those trees and i'll look at the grass and it's just so refreshing nature itself you know and sometimes you just have to be thankful for for the the things that that been, that were put on this earth and be just grateful for what you have and enjoy the things that are in your life because i tell people the littlest things in life we sometimes take for granted and those littlest things are sometimes really the biggest things in our life that are more, most meaningful absolutely and those are the little things that can be gone in a heartbeat and you just yes you never know when life is going to change and your best friend that you've been putting off to see is gone right exactly you know it, i so agree that gratitude is so important to all of us so thank you so much for this this has been great um so for those of you who are listening and want to get in touch with stacy we will have all of her contact information on our page below so please check out her books check out her website reach out to her i think she's going to be a wealth of information for you guys um it's been great having you thank you so much for joining us today oh thank you so much dr deborah for having me i appreciate being here thanks <laughs>